Jesus is mighty. Jesus, Jesus is holy. Jesus, Jesus is mighty. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Clevedon Baptist Church. It's lovely to see you. Welcome to our service of praise and worship on this lovely Sunday morning. And welcome, too, if you're at home joining with us online, uh, either real time or later in the week. If you're online real time, let us know. Send us a message. I'm sure Sam over there, who's doing our streaming, would love to hear from you. He nodded his head. Very enthusiastically there, yeah. <laughs> it's good to see you. 
We're going to sing a couple of songs at the beginning of our, of our service together as we meet in, in worship and praise. If you'd like to stand with us, we'll start with Be Thou My Vision.
go back and do that again higher than the mountains God, that's true, isn't it? His love never gives up. Would you like to sit down? And uh, at this time of our service, our, our usual practice, I guess, is to is to pray together. And I'm going to use most of Psalm 103 as a prayer for us this morning. If you've got your phones or your or your paper version of the Bible, you might want to follow that with us. Psalm 103, this is a prayer of, of praise from David. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. The Lord is compassionate 
and merciful, slow to get angry, filled with unfailing love. For his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. For he knows how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. Our days on earth are like grass, like wild flowers. We bloom and die. The wind blows and we are gone as though we had never been here. But the love of the Lord remains forever with those who fear him. His salvation extends to the children's children of those who are faithful to his covenant, of those who obey his commandments. The Lord has made the heavens his throne, and from there he rules over everything. Praise the Lord, you angels, you mighty ones who carry out his plans, listening for each of his commands. Yes, praise the Lord, you armies of angels who serve him and do his will. Praise the Lord, everything he has created, everything in all his kingdom. Let all that we are praise the Lord. Amen. Well, happy uh, bank holiday, August bank holiday weekend. We're ready for the beach a little bit later on. So uh, great to see you. Uh, welcome to you. Um, John, can you put some of that fantastic, some pictures up on the screen for us, uh, some things for us to be aware of. Uh, we're going to do this notice one more time about the gathering. Next Sunday. Next Sunday. <laughs> yes. Um, so if you haven't booked, I've got the clipboard. You can let Penny know. You can do it on Church Suites. Um, it'd be good to know roughly how many people are coming. If you get to next Sunday morning and you haven't booked, just come along anyway. We're going to share Anthony's food with That's you. That's fine. That is fine. <laughs> As I always say. As we always um, say, we'll let other people so go other first. We'll share. So please don't think, oh, I can't come along because Joe's been on about booking and I haven't booked. Um, the idea is most of us book well, and then there'll be extra yes. for those that don't. Yeah. If so a thousand people come out and book, we have got a problem. Yeah. But if you're you here this Bye morning, now. book up. But if yeah. you're watching from home and you're not sure how to and you want to come, it'd be great to see you. And um, we're going to, um, for those, especially our, those people that join us on live stream, we're going to live stream because we're not going to be here. We're going to be down uh, in Ken, uh, at the village hall and outside down there. But we are going to live stream the service, uh, the worship service, not the whole day, but the, the worship service. 11 o'clock. And that's going to be at 11 o'clock, so it's not half past 10. So if you come in at half past 10, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer, but we're going to live stream uh, our praise, our worship. We're going to mark the occasion of starting school, going back to school. Sorry about that, everybody down the front here. But we're mm -hmm. going to mark that as a good occasion and do some other stuff together and uh, look at the Bible together. And so that will be live stream next so week. So everybody who's coming, arrive from half past 10 and there'll be refreshments. Bring a chair, picnic rug um, with you if you can, or ask somebody else if they can bring a chair for you if you can't manage it yourself. Um, we can organise lifts if you still haven't got yeah. a lift. Then we're going to have the service, do some activities, um, great barbecue, afternoon all age crafts, activities, ice quiz, creams, ice cake. creams and cake. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be a great day. A couple of people have said, what if it rains? Well, I'll it's not going to rain. But I'll sort that out. We'll have to sort that one <laughs> but out. But we yeah. will still go ahead somewhere and Somehow. but just bring a light waterproof just in case bring your wetsuit you'll be fine <laughs> but it will still fine. happen <laughs> no. no no we're gonna have a good time so um and then a little f bit further on just to remind church members we're gonna have a uh, uh it's really in preparation for our october church meeting but but this is for us to get our heads hearts prayers conversation discussion creative thinking around two really important things that we're looking at, at the moment uh, really is children's ministry or children's mission as we reach out into our town, into our area uh, with the good news of Jesus among children. We want to look at that and think about the children's worker and how we can uh, boost, uh, expand our children's ministry here. And so uh, we'd love your input, your prayers, your thoughts into that. And it's something we've been looking at as uh, uh, in our church members' meetings uh, over recent times. But we want to bring that really to a head now and start to... Uh, uh, make decisions in the coming uh, weeks together. And the other thing is to think ab about this space that is wonderful for this setting right now, 
but uh, we, we want to think about how we could use this space during the week and make this much more uh, usable for the mission of the church uh, uh, in these days. And so we want to talk about that and look at that and see what kind of things we could use this space for and the type of investment we need to make to make this much more adaptable than it is. So there's an early um, late afternoon, early evening one there if you'd like to come out earlier on the Monday at a 7.30 one on the Tuesday. We'd love you to come along. Uh, it'll be an opportunity for you to talk with others and show, share ideas and for us to pray about this. And then when we come to the October church meeting, we don't get a lot of time to do that kind of uh, um, conversation stuff. We, we, we would have had that and we can bring thinking and thoughts and ideas from this September meeting into that October church me members meeting to make us... Uh, able to make wise, good, spirit-led decisions together. Uh, Thursdays, uh, here in the building, we've got two things running on Thursdays in September. Thursday the 8th, Young Adults starts again. If you'd like to be part of that group, um, send us a message or get in touch with Luke. And there's a weekend away at the beginning of October as well that yep. we're trying to get as many young adults in the region to come along to. And the Kintsuki Hope Wellbeing Group starts on that night. And have a word with... Jenny, if you'd like to come along to that, or if you know somebody, there's some postcards you can invite friends, family, neighbours along to, and uh, that's going to be a really helpful um, support to people. Not sure who Jenny is, but we will gladly show you who Jenny is, or which Jenny we mean. Um, harvest, oh, baptisms. We uh, have some baptisms coming up in the coming weeks. If you'd like to be baptised, like to find out more about uh, baptism, believers' baptism, please speak to, to one of us uh, uh, come and find one of us. We would uh, love to uh, have that conversation. And uh, at the end of September, we've got a baptismal service and uh, one in October as well. So there's some opportunities. Uh, we'll have the baptistry open and uh, we can go for that. We'd love to see you baptised. So that's coming up. And then Harvest is coming up end of September as well. And we'll be collecting the food bank and we'll give you some information, details about that. Uh, gang on the front here, we're gonna, there's these, these pictures are available for you. Uh, in juice. What we'd love you to do is take one of these pictures, colour it in, write on it a harvest prayer somewhere on the back of the front. Could be a thanksgiving prayer, a, a praise prayer, a prayer for someone else prayer, and bring it to that harvest celebration. So you've got a number of weeks, you could be as creative as you like. The picture will make sense when we have that harvest celebration together. But uh, with harvest in mind, we're going to show you a bit of a, a video to get us ready to uh, think about harvest. Brussel Village is a very beautiful village. Uh, it is most comprised of the indigenous community, particularly the Tamang. And they have been uh, marginalized in all the sectors. They have problems of not finding proper drinking water facilities. They don't have proper health posts, no birthing centers. People do agriculture, but they do in a very traditional way and their productions are very less. As the children of God, we all are called to take care of the people who are being marginalized. The people of Brazil are amazing. They are created and loved by God. They have the dreams to make life better for the whole village. Together, we can empower the people of Brazil to achieve their dreams. So as part of that harvest uh, celebration, we'll be thinking about how we can share and give and, uh, uh, and engage in uh, uh, the harvest across the world, and we'll be picking up that thing from BMS World Mission. And one of the things that uh, BMS World Mission, uh, it's one of our mission partners that we support, are encouraging us, oh, there's a picture, by the way, it's what it's going to look like, and uh, uh, you see the good land, and there's a goat there, and you can... A bit, a bit of fur on that. Is that the right word, fur? Is that what they have? Yeah. Do they? Oh, well, a coat. I don't know what it is on a goat. Anyway, don't go and get real stuff. I mean, make it up. Don't go and start cutting. Anyway, let's go on. Um, BMS are encouraging us. We, 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 we talk about this, this cost of living crisis, very real. Uh, and maybe, uh, uh, as you've gathered here, that's sort of, well, you can push it out of the back of your mind for a while. Now he's said about it again. And it's, a, it's a real concern for us, or maybe some friends of ours. It's a real problem in our nation at this time. It's on the news the whole time. But BMS is saying, hey, this is a global cost of living crisis. And they're 
trying to uh, remind us of that. That doesn't make our crisis any less difficult. I'm not trying to make that out, but we're, we're, this, is, this is more than the UK, and uh, we uh, uh, have a crisis in our own nation, but across the nations as well. We're living in troubled, stressed days. Uh, but that is last day's living. Uh, and while we pray for not only the Spirit to come, but for the Son, the Lord Jesus, to come again, drives us to do that kind of stuff, to be praying like that. Well, they're encouraging us to think and pray, and uh, you could look it up. There's actually an appeal that you could uh, uh, donate towards and, and, uh, uh, and engage in. But there is this, this kind of food issue going on, as well as this fuel crisis going on, uh, as nations war with nations, and, and it starts to affect people. And, uh, and so this is serious stuff. And so we're going to pray um, together. And uh, I've got some people that are going to come and lead us in prayer to help us. That's Gemma and Dave and Anne. That's great. Thank you so much. And so it'd be good that we could pray into uh, not only our own situations, but we remember the, the, the world around us. And these prayers just give us a little uh, feel of what's happening across the world, how we can pray. Let's pray together as the church this morning. Dear Lord, we pray for BMS world mission worker Benon Kayenya, who writes from Uganda with news of fuel prices going up, of the sharp increase in the prices of everyday products, and of Ugandans struggling to make ends meet. We join him in praying for hope for better days and for a return to normal life. our partners in Lebanon who tell us that the conflict in Ukraine is already worsening the humanitarian needs in their region and deepening the food crisis they have been going through. The country has started rationing wheat, only allowing it to be used for bread, and people have started stockpiling wheat and yeast, as well as sunflower oil. We pray that the hungry in Lebanon will be fed and that our partners can be your hands and feet in the region. We pray for our partners in Nepal, where Deepak Raj Rai tells us that the cost of basic foodstuffs is going up every week and that their redevelopment projects are becoming more and more expensive as the price of materials and fuel shows no sign of coming down. We pray that those on the margins in Nepal will be provided for and that a solution can be found. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And so as we face this crisis individually as the church we think about it globally. We want to do that with a kingdom perspective and uh, pray that the Lord will help us and guide us and stir us up in, in prayer. So there's some stuff going on uh, in the, the, uh, the, the coming weeks and uh, we'd love that uh, uh, you'll be part of that and, and join us and be part of that. So uh, we uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Not here, down at Ken. Village Hall for, it's, a, it's not just a gathering, it's a centenary gathering, a hundred years gathering, because uh, you know Is we're a hundred years old. Then? Is that the end of the hundred years? Well, no, I think we're, <laughs> we're, we've got a hundred years of Christmas coming uh -huh. up, I'm sure we do something about that as well. So uh, our we'll centenary harvest, yeah, centen yeah we just keep, keep it going. going. December the 3rd I was talking to the, uh, uh, we're going to Albania, I was talking to the church in Albania the other day, and they, they said to me, uh, you, 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 you've really dragged that hundred years on, haven't you? I said, it's the whole year. <laughs> uh, I just teach them how you keep, keep, keep recycling an event, and, uh, and they weren't convinced. But I am, so I, 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 like, I like the idea of a hundred. It's a hundred plus next year. <laughs> you wait. So. Okay, the, um, the children, you're going to go to your groups, because you're going to go down to, to Joyce, Juice uh, downstairs. If you're here, you're visiting with us. Great to see some people joining us. You're ever so welcome. If you've got youngsters with you, um, we've got this all age thing going on. So uh, teenagers, you're going that way. Children are going to go down there, down to the hall.
And there'll be people down there to meet you. That's it. Lead the way. Fantastic. Okay, John, if you could put my, uh, go back to my screen, that would be really helpful, thank you. When you came in, uh, you would have been given another one of our, our cards, our Explore cards. I hope you've got that. If you've not, Anne will gladly come make sure you've got one of these. We'd like you to have it in your hand because we are going to have the opportunity to have a conversation about this card in a minute. Tell us about these cards, Joan. Yeah, I think this is number three. And there's 12 in the set. Great cards um, for you to keep, or I mean, encourage you to give it to your friends, neighbours, work colleagues, have it on your desk so people ask what it is. And the website on the back, explorechristianity.info, is full of um, great information for people about how to become a Christian, um, prayer, the Bible, um, difficult questions you might want answers to, as well as showing people where there's local churches and connecting them with churches. So um, that's what we've got, another one today. Okay. So the idea is this is something for us to have right now, speaking to our lives now prophetically. And then to pray about who you feel you should be giving this one away to about finding peace. It might be the same person as yeah. the last two, or it could be somebody else that you really sense God is saying they could do with this um, oh. word from God yeah. to them today. Okay. So uh, we're going to... Uh, well, can we have some conversation about it, because so we've had a look at it. So if you're not sure who's sitting next to you, you can, it's also an opportunity to say welcome and hello and, and to get to know someone. We're going to have a few minutes together, then we're going to come back and Joe will uh, lead us through it and pray us into uh, the words on this card. So um, uh, let's do that now. Just turn around, first find someone, say hello to them, introduce yourself, don't be shy, do all that kind of stuff. Maybe talk about how you've been using these cards already.
going to come back in a minute. Okay, well done for conversation. And we want these to be really useful for passing on to others. But right now, again, if you're on site or online with us, we really want a prayer that you would be able to find peace. Maybe this is such a timely word for you right now to find peace so let's not miss this moment and uh, let's pray and let's allow the spirit of God to come thanks Joe. I looked up the rest of this verse in the message version of the bible and uh, it was just so inspiring you find me quiet pools to drink from True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. And I love the phrase, catch our breath. So let's pause and ask God to help us to catch our breath right now. Let's ask the question, am I going in the right direction? Am I walking with God? Do I need to find a quiet pool? Is God showing me a quiet pool? Should I be stopping and drinking? We pray, Lord, that this week you would lead us to quiet pools and help us to remember to catch our breath so that we can be sent in the right direction. Dear God, I am learning to be quiet, just to be, and know that you are with me. Thank you that I don't need special words to talk to you, or even any words at all. You are here. I am here. You hold me in the stillness of this moment. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to read some words from Esther chapter 9. And if you want to use the Church Bibles, it's page 389. We're working our way. We're coming to the end of this uh, fantastic Old Testament book this morning. Verse 20, Mordecai recorded these events and sent letters to the Jews near and far throughout all the provinces of King Xerxes, calling on them to celebrate an annual festival on these two days. He told them to celebrate these days with feasting and gladness and by giving gifts of food to each other and presents to the poor. This would commemorate a time when the Jews gained relief from their enemies, when their sorrow was turned into gladness and their mourning into joy. So the Jews accepted Mordecai's proposal and adopted this annual custom. Haman, son of Hamadatha, 
uh, the Agagite, the enemy of the Jews, had plotted to crush and destroy them on the date determined by casting lots. The lots were called Purim. When Esther came before the king, he issued a decree causing Haman's evil plot to backfire. I love that little phrase there. His evil plot to backfire. And Haman and his sons were impaled on a sharpened pole. That is why this celebration is called Purim, because it is the ancient word for casting lots. So because of Mordecai's letter and because of what they had experienced, the Jews throughout the realm agreed to inaugurate this tradition and pass it on to their descendants and to all who became Jews. They declared that they would never fail to celebrate these two prescribed days at the appointed time each year. These days would be remembered and kept from generation to generation and celebrated by every family throughout the provinces and cities of the empire. The festival of Purim would, be, would never cease to be celebrated among the Jews, nor would the memory of what happened ever die out among their descendants. Then Queen Esther, along with Mordecai, the Jew, wrote another letter, putting the Queen's full authority behind Mordecai's letter to establish the festival of Purim. Letters wishing peace and security were sent to the Jews throughout the 127 provinces of the Empire of Xerxes. These letters established the festival of Purim, an annual celebration of these days at the appointed time, uh, dec uh, decreed by, by both Mordecai the Jew and Queen Esther. The people decided to observe this festival just as they decided for themselves and their descendants to establish the times of fasting and mourning. So the command of Esther confirmed the practices of Purim and it was all written down in the records. We're going to stand together. We're going to sing that song, You Give Rest to the Weary. John, we need the other words up. Thank you. It's the next one on. It's the next song, John. Actually, that's, we're going to, that's the one. We're going to start this in the middle in the bridge because it, the lo lovely bridge in the middle talks about us waiting, waiting for, for God. So that's where we're going to start this song, John. Stand together. So I'll wait, I'll wait, yes I'll wait, I'll wait for you. So I'll wait, I'll wait, yes I'll wait, I'll wait for you. So I'll wait. Yes, I'll wait, I'll wait for you. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. I will say of the Lord, He is my strength. I will say of the Lord, He is my shelter, my hiding place. When we go back to the start and sing, you give rest to the weary.
you can come in the silence. You can come in the silence. You can come in the noise. Bringing peace in a moment. Bringing comfort and joy. source of all creation. I will drink from the well that never dries. I will draw from the one who won't grow tired, the Lord of source of all creation. I will drink from the well that never dries. I will draw from the one who won't grow tired, the Lord of Please sit down and we're going to turn to uh, Esther chapter 9. This morning we're coming to the end. Uh, there's a kind of an outline of where we're, we're going. You want to do a screenshot of that, uh, note that down. We, we have in these final verses that the dynamics of, of community, the community of God's people in celebration together. Uh, that's a good thing. That's kind of part of what next weekend's about that we gather and we celebrate. We, we have the theme of commu- communication and the, those words of, of shalom, peace going out. And then as we come, we, we know that Esther's role has kind of been completed. She's done her thing. And yet at the same time, we have Mordecai, uh, who's mentioned as we go into chapter 10, and we'll touch on that as we come to the end of this book. And it's more about the continuation of serving Uh, God in his days and and there's that sense of of us as we live in that tension of completing things that have been given to us and continuing to serve and serve God's mission or purposes in these days. In these verses we we find this dynamic description of, 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 of the people of God in community together, joining together uh, with, with gladness and with joy. There's feasting, there's food, uh, there's celebration, uh, that there's remembering together, uh, telling their salvation story of deliverance, uh, uh, how evil kind of backfired on itself, how God uh, gave relief and deliverance to his people, 
passing this on to the next generations. Uh, giving gifts and giving to the poor so that the memory of what happened would never die out among their descendants. And uh, Purim, still celebrated today amongst Jews, is, is a celebration of, of laughter, of feasting, of storytelling. Uh, uh, people dress up and when they tell the Esther story, there's great cheers whenever es Esther's mentioned or Mordecai is mentioned and everybody boos and hisses and stamps their feet. Uh, rightly so when Haman's mentioned and they have uh, 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 noisemakers and, and uh, uh, there's food and there's laughter. Uh, and one of the, uh, the, the, the traditions of the food is, is baking a three-cornered jelly-filled pastry. That sounds good to me. Uh, a jelly-filled pastry. And... and uh, uh, and as one commentator points out, that the hidden jelly recalls the hiddenness of God. It's one of those things that we've been looking at time and time again through Esther. He writes, I like that tradition. Jelly is sweet and tasty. And when hidden in a, in a donut, a surprise to discover. I like the idea that God's presence, scrumptious and unseen, is baked into the story of redemption. And I appreciate the value of a two-day celebration in which people of faith revisit the day and weigh their God prevailed. And so food's a big deal in this, uh, in this festival. And you'll notice in the reading, so are gifts. Gifts of food and, and it says presents to the poor. Joy celebration, gifts given, received, because these people were amazed at the relief, deliverance, rescue, salvation that that came about so unexpectedly, but it came to them like a gift. And so they remember and celebrate Purim with with gifts. They celebrate the gift with gifts. And we do the same. That is us today. Our story, our experience is the gift of a saviour and the gift of salvation. It's all gift. It is given to us for us by faith to receive. So it's happened. They are there. They have arrived. They're waiting for you. Just across the square, in b &Ms, in August, the Christmas gift box sets, they're there. I saw them yesterday, they're there. You'd better be quick. Because uh, all this kind of crisis we face, I'm sure there's going to be a crisis on uh, Lynx body sets, body spray sets coming up. And uh, that's the kind of gifts I give. So, um, uh, so you need to be ready, you need to get there. But we don't just celebrate then the gift. I, I, we, we celebrate it right here now. The gift of a saviour as in an amazing, unexpected way, the, the Saviour comes and dies on a cross to save us. And now, thanks be to God for his gift beyond words. The Son whom he loved, no, he did not withhold him, but with him gave everything. Now his everything to me. This uh, annual two-day Purim celebration speaks to us. It models for us everyday church. It's Acts Church stuff in the New Testament, a community of salvation, deliverance, who gather, celebrate, give, remember, share in meals, experience feasting with great joy, united in heart and mind, giving to those in need among them as God's message continues to spread. 
Esther 9 gives to us great pointers for being and doing church. Oh, it's important to the Jews. Purim is still celebrated today. But Esther 9 can be important to us. Important because we might forget that this historic storytelling of Esther ends up with a call to the community of the people of God to remember. They declared they would never fail to celebrate these two days. These days would be remembered and kept. They tell, retell, seek to live within the salvation story, that salvation Esther story of relief and deliverance for the relief and deliverance promised happened. See, the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them, but quite the opposite happened. And so they remember, and we remember, and we remember in a whole variety of ways, not least with bread and wine, but we remember, and, and we remember and we retell the good news, uh, the salvation story of deliverance. We are a community for a hundred years, hundred years plus, where we will remember. Uh, Esther and I was important because we might isolate ourselves. Purim is about community, being a people together. It's a shared corporate experience, fellowship thing. You don't go off and sulk in a corner. No, we, we choose. These two days we're going to be together. We're going to buy into this. We're going to celebrate in community. Why? Because Satan loves to isolate believers. Now you may be okay because you're here. Good. But there may be other brothers and sisters that you need to, with kindness and gentleness, but with directness, say, hey, you need to be in community, not isolated on your own. It's important for us because we might take for granted our salvation. They would remember, they would commemorate a time when the Jews gained relief from their enemies. They declared they would never fail to celebrate these two precise days at the appointed time of each year. These verses are important uh, to us because we might have blurred vision. You notice that concise summary that enables salvation focus. I am having my eyes done again this week and and uh, she said, I'm going to try and help you have, have clarity of focus. I thought I had clarity of focus in life, but no, you can have one and she kept kind of sticking these lenses in front of my eyes. Is this better with this one or this one, this one? I get so confused. I don't know anymore, which is the best one. Do it again, do it again. But uh, in the end, um, she came up with a new prescription and bill. Uh, for uh, So next time I better see you, because I'll be okay. Uh, but that, that clarity of focus, uh, Haman, the enemy of the Jews, he plotted to crush, destroy them on a date determined by casting lots. We looked at that weeks ago now. They were called pouring, but, but when Esther came before the king, he issued a decree causing Haman's evil, to, evil plot to backfire. Fantastic, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Haman and his sons were impaled on a sharpened pole. That's why this celebration is called Purim, because it's the ancient word for casting light. Hey, we, we need clarity of, 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 of salvation vision. It's important because we might assume our children know. And here are deliberate, intentional instructions and actions about the next generations. Hey, you've got you to... Gotta, Get this festival set in your lives and then you need to pass this on to your descendants. Uh, uh, these days will be remembered and kept from generations to generations. That's why our children's mission, our children's mission, it's a vital aspect of our work here. It really needs to become, is, become more of a vital aspect of our ministry and mission why we put it under the spotlight at this time in our life together. We have good news to pass on to the children who live in this town and in this region and down the roads you live in and in all these schools around here. And they don't assume, they know. They make sure they know. 
And it's important because we might walk on the other side and miss out the poor. A little note in here. Uh, all this joy and festivity and we're going to have food and laughter uh, and we're going to have a right old party. Hey, but we've got to make sure we don't forget the poor. Presence to the poor, it says. It's good to celebrate through generosity. And there's a cost of living crisis and we must not neglect or forget or walk on the other side and walk away from the poor. For we delight in the grace of giving. And Esther 9 uh, is important, could be important, could be very important for some of us uh, right now because we might get stuck. You see him on the, the picture there, that, that vehicle, it's well and truly stuck. And Purim is about movement and renewal. When in exile, in a time of crisis, in a time of great threat and pressure, we can speak about our context of being a kind of exile, a time of crisis where we feel under threat, under great pressure for all kinds of reasons, where there's fear about how we share truth uh, with others, how we uh, live out the Bible and share good news with others and, and so on. It says their sorrow was turned into gladness, their mourning into joy. Now we may be kind of stuck in a rut uh, and you need a kind of a toe out, a pull out. And some people are saying, well, you, you need to pull yourself out of that. And you say, you don't know how stuck I am. But praise God that he, in grace, is able to turn sorrow into gladness and mourning into joy. Of course, moments of threat, of trauma, of loss, of exile will have a massive impact upon people's lives. It did in those days, it does in our days, it does in our own lives. Sor sorrow and mourning is real life stuff. As much as we might try, we, we can't escape it. And the last thing we want to do here is trivialise or ignore sorrow or mourning. So much sorrow and mourning in this broken world. But individuals, communities, church congregations can get stuck. Those who want to pursue joy especially need to practice celebration. Hence, in these, these final Esther words, there's this laying down. This is what we're going to do, church. This is what we're going to do, people of God. We are, we're going to be a people of celebration. It's, just, it's strategic celebration. It's not, hey, if you kind of feel like it, oh, come and all gee ourselves up and, and do so. No, we're going to build into our lives. This is strategic stuff that we're going to be a people who celebrate. Oh, it's totally right to give permission for sorrow and mourning. Of course, joy does not circumvent sorrow, suffering, mourning. The opposite, actually. It arises precisely from within it. That's the book of Esther. Actually, that's the words of Jesus when he talks about his disciples under great threat and suffering and how we are to not just have a bit of joy around the place, we're to leave the joy, he says. I mean, leaping around the place is, is, is kind of like, for me, extra joy then. Sometimes it seems that we're so serious that we forget that joy is actually the serious business of heaven, as C.S. Lewis put it. Or the uh, Baptist preacher Spurgeon uh, uh, used to speak of the invented extra commandment, thou shalt pull a long face on Sundays. Esther gives strategic permission for gladness and joy. Uh, joy uh, produces chemicals in our bodies that uh, reduce pain and lower stress, even strengthen the immune system. It's good medicine, joy. It's great spiritual medicine. Now, you know I've always got me top 10, so I've got top 50. 
of joy. I just want to tell you what comes right at the end, because we'll do the first bit in a minute, but this is what leads to joy. In that number 50, no more chewing gum left on pavement, pavements. That will be great joy. I think that will be good girl. Oh, that's a great joy. Getting a promotion comes in at number 49. At number 48, getting home to find dinner on the table. Uh, for me, I'd, I'd want to qualify that with getting home and finding the right kind of dinner on the table, but there you go. Uh, but uh, that may be me more than them. And then number 47 is having enough seats so you don't have to stand on the train. That is all about joy and happiness in our world. But it goes through, and there's all kinds of other things uh, that uh, uh, we find interesting. Number 46 is finding out there really is a heaven. Uh, Number 34, a dog or cat choosing to sit on you. There you go. I, I don't know if that's good or, or, or not. Uh, number 30, it's having good skin days forever. Uh, whatever a good skin day is and whatever forever is, but that is what uh, uh, is good. Number 22 is receiving gifts. Number 17, just pull this one out. All plans going to plan, <laughs> if only. Uh, number 14, finding something you thought you'd lost forever. And then, as we come to the top three, number three, finding a fiver in your pocket. I <laughs> need more than a fiver. But, uh, but uh, that'll start. Uh, going on holiday, number two. And then, uh, so we think, in the survey done, what will give you the most joy? Winning the lottery. The Bible speaks of the joy of the Lord, the joy of our salvation. Either we dismiss the good news as too good to be true or we permit ourselves to be overwhelmingly joyful persons because of it. Then we move from community just to communication. They, the last thing the storyteller tell says about Esther is that she wrote this letter, and she sends this communication, this letter. The, the wording is a kind of an official, a royal document, uh, a word confirming her authority uh, uh, as she uh, over this setup of this annual feasting festival, kind of a dispatch to the empire. And uh, these letters go out to the 127 provinces of uh, the Empire of Xerxes. And uh, we find, actually, that theme in this book of Esther of, of communication systems of the day being used to get out messages and decrees and letters. This fast, fast empire, as you can see on the, the, the picture there, stretched from India to Ethiopia. Uh, and in uh, other chapters, it talks about uh, how swift messengers, fast horses, were, were let loose to get messages out across the empire. And, and Esther connects into this kind of information sharing system, as did actually, interestingly, the Apostle Paul later on in life, um, in the history of the church, as he dispatches his letters using the, the Roman road system. And of course, the, in the New Testament days, the, the Romans were building and putting in place this, this road system that would move armies from one place to another place very quickly. Uh, and also could move trade around and could move people around. And of course, these became useful as well for speedy communication, which enabled the message of Jesus to get out and spread and get into people's lives. And I just wanted to say, as we're in passing on this communication thing, is that, that uh, the digital world, it may not be your kind of thing in your world, but the digital world is like that ancient Roman road communication system. And we can communicate good news at such a time as this. That, that hybrid church uh, is here to stay. It's a way we can go to the nations. It's something that needs our attention and our, 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 our development. It's something that we will be looking at in coming weeks and months. We've made a great, great start. But, but this is how we can, can get the, the good news of Jesus out across the nations of the world. Letters wishing peace and security. Uh, words of peace and truth. 
uh, which actually are quite prophetic words. The prophets use those words, peace and truth. Uh, Zechariah talks about in chapter 8 of the ingathering of God's people from the nations and there is feasting and joy and festivals and gladness because fasting has ended and there's the call to love, peace and truth and it rings out to the people of God. You need to love peace and truth or peace and security. And so in Esther 9 we have these loaded words, prophetic words, as we're caught up, as Esther's caught up, as we're caught up in this missional gathering people in, movement of God amongst the nations. Very exciting days these days. They're, they're days of, of global crisis, but actually they're exciting days as God is gathering from the nations. I mentioned Albania and our, our brothers and sisters there, and they're rejoicing that through their camps that they've seen 5, 10, 15 people come to faith. Fantastic news. God gathering his people in from the nations. And our, our world today could do with his words of peace and security. Desperate for words of peace and security, of peace and truth. Well, Esther has completed her task uh, for the moment, for such a time as this. And Mordecai paid his part. The Mordecai the Jew became, chapter 10, the Prime Minister with authority next to that of King Xerxes himself. He was very great among the Jews who held him in high esteem because he continued to work for the good of his people and to speak up for the welfare of all their descendants. For he sought the welfare of his people, spoke peace to all his people. That shalom, salvation, healing, wholeness, peace. So with this message going to the nations and a reminder that uh, we, the whole church, is to take the whole gospel to the whole world. The book of Esther comes to an end. But a new chapter is beginning and the salvation story continues. The exciting drama of Esther is over, but the blessings go on right on. God preserved the Jewish nation so that today we have a Bible and a saviour. God's people in exile realised uh, they could, they needed to embrace their identity and trust the hidden hand of God. For God is sovereign. He, he is with us. He is for us, saving us, even when he seems most not absent, for he's never absent in Esther, but when he seems most hidden. For God, as we've learned, is working his purposes out. For Esther's God is our God. For God is our God. Deliverer. And so we praise him.
faithful God whose presence sometimes is hidden in plain sight. The all-sufficient one Shalom our peace, our strong deliverer. We lift you up, faithful God. Lord, at such a time as this, in these days, Help us, like Esther and Mordecai, to fulfil our God-given potential, to play our part within your church and out into the world. Lord, encourage us to find our identity, not in what we do, but in who you are. Lord, enable us to build your kingdom now that we might be ready when you return again as King of kings and Lord of lords. Lord, we thank you that there are those moments when the task is completed and yet at the same time we hear that call to continue to the end. So come, Holy Spirit, come and fall upon us afresh. As we go into the rest of this week, trusting in you. Lord, this day we thank you. We celebrate the gift. The gift of a saviour. The gift of salvation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.